Welcome back, guys, to Trails of Cold Steel 4, where last episode we took on a request of Monks as we gathered replacement voice actors for his radio show in the Radio Stars Reborn, fluently keeping the cast professional as they read their lines completing the show. From there, we spent our next bonding point with Princess Alfin as we headed to her meeting with Prince Cedric, who tried to convince her to leave the forces opposing him while she staunchly stood her ground, with well, the next time we meet bound to be a rivalry. Afterwards, we swept Eren, taking the dip in the bass with the original Class 7 girls, forehand and Milsante, as we now move out to face Gali. Couldn't see a marker after him. Why are we looking? A bit further on. Shit! I wonder if I can go back into that place to just level up. Grind it out a bit. Shit! At this point, I've got most of the world available to me, which is very nice too. Yeah, he's running away, so I can actually probably kill them now. I've really got that much extra levels on me? I somehow don't think so, but still. Yeah, he's running. Damn it! Let me destroy you! I'll take the extra money! Alright, so that's Gali. Money, 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 money! Alright! Our next foe! Our next enemy. What kind of cryptid are you? Are you gonna kill me somehow? Let's find out! It looks pretty tough. Let's watch out. This is for... Act 3 now, yeah. Clearing the airwaves. Oh, that's the other quest there. So it looks like we've got it listed after we talk to it, I guess. Valerie. So, so I want to believe. 7k. Let's do it. What a passionate foe. Let's go first. Not on my watch! Big hit. Let's go! Would make sense to get someone who can defense us up. And also, I just want to go with dodge Roar. right now. Gold Dragon Formation! Let's go! An extra crit allows me to regain the stuff, so I will push forward. Roar! Uh, helix Strike! I hope that separates now. our guys enough. An opening! Leave it to me. Okay, Mackie's, you're actually going out straight away. Switch with me. I'll do my best. Sorry, but, you know. Arcus, activate. Abyss oh. wave. <laughs> Didn't break the spell. Got a crit there. I'll handle this. It did break the spell. It broke a bit more than the spell. Not good. Wake yeah. up, Rocky. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Right, I didn't have that, so I can't use that for anything. Uh, we just do fire. We didn't have any fire here. Our best bet is Lost Genesis. There's nothing really I can support myself with. The best fire we've got is actually you. But we want to switch you on a lost start, maybe. Arcus, activate! Now! I'll handle this! That you will. Get in there! Oh, you should probably use that first. <laughs> Musei's got shining, right? Huh. So we need to get use some of those critical turns to build up the BP again. There. I wonder why they thought it would be a good idea, and I've probably said this multiple times. And to put the big defense buffs for four turns on the one that reflects spells. I cut the damage by a fair amount. Let's go! Roar! <gasps> uh, helix strike! 
It's down! An opening! Ash is in the group so we can go critical My later. Team. Brandish is doing a little extra damage. Got true light rush there. Right! Bruh. It's off balance! Quite whomping here! Opening. That was kind of redonkulous. <laughs> AT delay on Laura. Let's go! Is he gonna enhance soon? Keep it up! Oh, we've got it! There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is! Yes. It's on the board! Ha! My turn! Sorry, take over! I'm up! You are up indeed! I haven't scanned it yet. <laughs> Oops. Uh, what? <laughs> Do it! I guess you're not a caster and all. <laughs> Still somewhat surprised. Well, it looks like it's surviving for me long enough to scan it. So that was a big hit there. I'm up. Okay, what are you gonna do about the other stuff now, eh? Go berserk! Infernal hunt! It's my turn! How much HP are we looking at? 75k? Yeah, we're good. Roar! Healing <gasps> uh, strike! It's down! An opening! Yes! We're close to getting a break, so we'll use Lost Genesis here. Huh? We I will got this. swap in Elliot. Tag out! I'll do my best. Get the scan. Analyzing enemy unit. I got it! Late cryptid with rock hard scales that spews out clouds of corrosive gas and is able to turn its victims to stone. An ocean bell will be our reward. Hurry Music, up! Art support. This is the break, by the way. Music gets most of the MP back. Let's it's, go. It's kind of silly when you look at it. <laughs> Laura Bonk. <laughs> Is that all? You must train more. Nice job. Right, we'll take our award as well as a nice amount of experience. An ocean all Bell. All right, got it. I go Muse or Elliot. I must continue to train. <laughs> I grew a little. <laughs> I did it. The rest of the group are nearly making 120. Petrification Shell Two can now be used by Mackie as a high caliber petrifying shot. Petrifies 60% on large. First Drive 2 can also be used as well. The Accelerate and restores 20% EP. <laughs> nice. He was waiting to get new crafts for a while, but look at it. I want to believe is completed. The 7,000 mirror and one bonding point. That was our bonding quest. <laughs> the cryptid has given us the power of bonding rather than the power of a lost start. I'll take it. What do next? I guess we're back to the courageous. Wait, there's something else in the Lake Gala by road? Eh? I don't see another thing on the Lake Gala by road. Yeah. You didn't have to tell me it's a Lunar Shrine. If it's not there, it's got to be Lunar Shrine. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not dumb dumb. Don't mind me. So it's all the way at the altar. Why is there something there?
Well, let's warp our way there, so we can go back in there if we want to find more things. Interesting. I'm a bit worried about this. So it's at the back. Don't tell me, Zamirin Ore, maybe? Iron Hair. Iron Hair for Reen? What? What's Iron Hair, Reen? I don't even know how to sit, set this stuff. It's not, it doesn't end there, it's costume. Okay, yeah, I get it. Don't trust him having red hair. Why is there a random wig in a shrine? That's the thing. Whatever. Sure, I guess. Well, that's East Lemaire done. We've done one whole everything to the courageous. So, Laura's or Sarah's? I guess we'll go to Sarah's, considering it's the follow on. And it'll be interesting to find out what that is, to be fair. Considering we're going back to the gravestone. This might be a bit more kissy on the basis that she's a lot older. So we'll find out. I'm about to head out and pay a visit to his grave. I should be able to meet up immediately if you need to. Just get in touch with me through the Arcus if that's the case, alright? Let's, uh, yeah, we should go. Mind if we go together? Mm -hmm. Of course not, Reem. We'll have to Ordis, okay? To Ordis we go. After Sarah and Reem received a certain summing from Governor Regnus and Ordis, they headed to the same North Southern Highway spot that they visited last time. It's the flag from the Naval Fortress, right? It'll make a fitting tribute for Colonel Valstein. Good thing Governor Regnitz kept it aside for us. And there may be black pleuromograss here, but apparently it's not interfering with the spirit veins. That's good to know. You want to help, Reen? Sure. Cleansing flame. <laughs> Looks like you found the way forward. Some old ghost to rest too. Thank you for that. Be careful out there. I'd hate for you to die before things really start getting interesting. Same to you guys. Next time we meet, it'll probably be his enemies though. Sarah, about what happened before. You know what? I think I was just hearing things. Maybe my dad really did drop in to see how his beloved daughter is doing these days. If he did, he'll know I'm into a totally different kind of guy now. Huh? Come on, for real? You really are hopelessly dense sometimes, you know that. Unless someone else snatches you up soon, I won't count myself out of the running just yet. Wow, that was a really short morning event. <laughs> Your bond with Sarah has strengthened. You shared a special moment with Sarah. More or less a finisher for the battle that happened before. Sarah's bond is at maximum. Sarah shouldn't even be in the running. Well, uh, 
I consider her more eligible in the running than a lot of the other people though. <laughs> like class 7 students. No. Elise, no. Alfin, no. <laughs> kind of as well. Very young. So, yeah, I'd consider she'd above them. <laughs> At a start basis, we've got two bonding points left. We've already bonded, so now we have to choose our next place to sweep. So, where do we go from here? We've got Palm, we've got South Southern Highway. That's where something's going on at the camp, wasn't it? We could check that out. Something special's waiting me there, right? Hey, guys. Instructor Marine, it's an honor to see you again. You guys here to see what we're working on? That's about the size of it. Your plan was to use the Durfling and the Ark Royale to destabilize the defenses, right? It won't be easy dealing with the RMP and Intelligence Division either, and we have to think outside the box. We're going to need plenty of support on the ground to lead up to the final rivalry, too. Yeah, we know easy feet, but Instructor Michael taking command of the Durflinger should inspire confidence. As for the Ark Royale, that's well, going to be packed in the guilds with four scrats. We've got a lot of friends in the military, so we should be able to poke some holes in their defenses. Hibel from the Wind Orchestra, for example. He's part of the military band now. We made some excuse to split up with him and join up with us. We can also count on Monica from the Swimming Club and Klein is in the Intelligence Division now. Well, when you hear it all spelled out like that, it really brings home the scope of this plan. Have you ever known Force to do things in half measures? By the way, Kenneth and I have been travelling around making arrangements for the two trains' destinations. We'll be safe here a while longer, but we should probably start thinking about where we want to go next. Oh, I think we can get closer to the front without being spotted. I trust your judgement is completely. You've got to have a real eye for details. Must be thanks to all the time they spend looking at the perfect fishing spots. Well, this wood could be the catch of a lifetime. Thanks everyone. Best of luck. Of course. Be careful out there, you guys. I can take care of things over here. I've got plenty of friends I can depend on. Let's take care of that. So Kenneth has joined up you with this You sure do club. like this, huh, Reem? Yeah. Tight lines out there. Fishing's good. Tight lines to you too. Really, Kenneth, do you think you were intentionally avoiding getting in contact with anyone? It's no wonder I didn't see you while I was scouring the entire empire. What'd you scour the entire empire for, Annabelle? N nothing. No reason at all. <laughs> it's good these two got to see each other again, but they still have a lot of work to go through. A lot to work through, anyway. I can't forget what Lord Lakelaw said to me the other day. Annabelle, take a deep breath. Push this from your thoughts. You have work to do. It's like throwing out a fishing line. Just stay calm and collected. Annabelle's fishing! A good old Kenneth. That's kind of funny. I hope you catch that one. My upperclassmen are such good role models. I must learn from them and keep improving. If I don't, we won't be able to repay Major Irving, nor would be able to correct Prince Cedric's mistakes. Do you think you can turn him to our side, maybe? I mean, the game even counts him out as irredeemable. So this is the operation we heard about back in Leaves. I definitely like Ash's, like, custom... Everyone's custom-painted ones. The joint component adjustments are complete, so we're finished here for the time being. We'll really be able to see how well we can fully utilize it once we hit crunch time. We need to prepare ourselves now. Okay, no double speak. Cool. And there's someone at the orbital station. That's a pretty huge array of controls to get used to. I heard that the Durfling was attacked by Ouroboros. The branch campus has really been through a lot, haven't they? Yes, we have. More than you know. I mean, nothing's going on there. I mean, I could have a bath just to cure a little bit of our CP woes. Can't pass by the showers, right? Oh, that was refreshing. Green got in with Elliot. Scandalous. All the girls were disappointed, but Reem was happy. Right, off we go. My people are here. Michael? Indeed. Ah, Celestine! And you! Fiona! Good day, everyone. Celestine, I didn't realize you were here. I don't think I've seen you since the airship incident. And my, how grateful I was to have you there. Things could have been much worse. Fiona, Instructor Michael, it's good to see you again too. I understand you've already been briefed on the plan. 
That's right, we'll be participating in the diversionary tactics. The handling of the Durfling will be left largely to the main campus students, but coordination between all parties will be key. Right now, we're just working out the logistics of it all. Oh, so that's why you're here too, Fiona. Yes, I came to discuss matters with Major Michael in Father's stead. He says the 4th Division is going to turn a blind eye to any movements on the Durflingers' part. I see. It makes sense that General wouldn't want an order like that traced back to him. Thanks to that, getting around should be quite a bit easier. I'm just going to start drawing up some more concrete plans when you all arrived. Marcus High Arms has agreed to provide support to the operation across the board. I'll also be on hand for the duration to offer what assistance I can. Right, I'm feeling more confident already. I'm limited in what I can do to help Elliot or Father, but there has to be some way I could support them. I'll have to think of something. Since the war is officially declared, it's only been getting more and more difficult for everyone. Please stay safe. I may not be on our side, but if we use the RMP special line, you should make it. You headed for the second rivalry, correct? Be sure to see it through. I intend to lend a hand where I can, even though I'm merely temporarily managing the branch campus. If possible, please do not find it necessary to worry about things here. And I guess that's this area done, so that's another area for our sweep knocked off the world. <laughs> I've had a maintenance document that includes what we've been working with. Despite how fair it is, it's a surprisingly easy read. The author really put a lot of thought into it. I'd like to meet them someday and see what they're like. I'm pretty sure it was Tatiana that authored the document. <laughs> Makes me feel proud to be an instructor. And you're the driver, are you? Never thought the network comms could be used like this. It hurts my pride a little, but I think I'll be taking some notes from the source, if you don't mind. Hey, Ada. Hey, Ada. Carrying out maintenance on the Dufflinger. Yes, it uses a system unique to the branch campus, including the calculation methods and settings. While I've backed up the original data, what I'm in the process of now is rewriting it to match specifications made by and for the main campus. I see. Thanks for that. I'll count on you to use the Durflinger as best you see fit. Of course, I'll take good care of her. Anyway, I feel like I finally have an idea of how sizable the missing piece in this equation is. Almost every operation so far has been led by Prince Cedric after all. Now it kind of leaves me feeling, well... I understand. It's only natural to feel on an edge at a time like this, you know. But you've all changed since then, right? Yes, the times I've been chasing after His Highness, trying to be worthy of him, are in the past now. I don't doubt there'll be difficulties that we cannot manage alone. But it's our turn to lead him, away from the wrong path he's chosen, and we'll be unwavering, because no matter what, we adore our Prince. In that case, I'll be sure to watch the main campus's courage come through. You can bet on it. Thanks, Spaceman, for the follow. Welcome. We'll be going all out to honor the branch campus. Rest assured, I'll make good use of the Durflinger. She's in safe hands. And that is South Southern Highway done. So I guess if we're looking to knock off one of the big cities on our list. Oh my goodness, we got Requel and Ulster. Well, let's keep up our thing of one quest, one bonding event, which we've done. But the bonding event was very short. Let's go to Sutherland. That's three areas versus four. I think we can deal with that. Even though there's still quite a lot to check out. I hear the first and 16 farming divisions are mustering their forces at the Titus Gate. They must be setting up to advance to Calvo from the Liberlian border. If the way things are going, the whole continent may be consumed by this great war. Considering the disparity in military capabilities, human casualties are inevitable. I plan to consult with Marcus High Arms on how I can support those who survived the war. Everything about what will happen after the war is a little premature, but we have to take it into account if we're to have any prospect of building a peaceful future. Okay. Double, double, double. Double, double, double. Double, double. Give me double. New, fresh dialogue. I've had so many orders and repair requests for military uniforms from Titus Gate recently. I thought they only had a handful of troops stationed there to watch the border with the bell. For some reason, we've had orders for new recruit uniforms in the 1st Armour Division and the 16th Armour Division. I'd rather not think about it, but are the Armour Divisions going to pass through the Kingdom of Le Bell to wage war on Calvard? There's a lot we can deduce, but perhaps it's best that we didn't interest ourselves too much in military matters. If the 1st and 16th Armour Divisions are going to pass through Le Bell to make their assault, then one can't help but wonder, how exactly will the 4th Armour Division that's stationed at Dreknor Fortress be moving? All of this is enough to rouse suspicion in anyone. Oh, excuse me, we really should avoid poking our noses into these matters. He says as he tells us even more of the matters. White jacket, we've got an instant dress. Why can't we wear it? We look 
great in an instant dress, I'm sure. I've only been hearing bad things about Kleist & Co recently. People are saying they're in a league with the government and are covering up illegal activity. They were so popular, but now they've disappointed so many. I wanted to eventually visit Kleist more, but in light of recent news, I think I won't. That's just so disappointing. Kleist & Co is getting some very bad reviews lately. I wanted to eventually visit Kleist more, but in light of... Yeah, disappointing. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's every service I operate with my husband to start up again? Recently, my husband's truck was requisitioned by the military. But it just so happened that Kleist & Co, or Managing Director Hugo's orders, began to support business owners and the flow of goods. My husband borrowed a truck from the company, so he's been able to resume his deliveries. I had no idea what we were going to do for a while. I'm going to work hard with my husband to make this relaunch a success. The delivery or service I operate with my husband has started up again. Things aren't easy at the store, but I'm going to work really hard on this relaunch with my husband. See, that's double dialogue. That's what I'm after. Up stores a bookshop, remember? Hey, Tom will pay me a secret visit just earlier. He was doing much better than I thought he'd be. It was such a relief, but he really does like to cause a scene, huh? Ah, Tobal showed up here. Yeah, I used to provide some assistance to the Guild's St. Ark branch back in the day, so Tobal and I are well acquainted. The branch may be gone, but there still needs to be somebody to sort the help requests and provide weapons to the Bracers. It also means collaborating with the Legrand branch in certain cases. I see. That makes sense. This gives me a newfound appreciation for Miles and all the work he does at the Legrand branch to sustain his information network. Right about your situation. I can't do much, but I hope to fully support you and the Bracers. If you have any weapons or armor, you're always welcome in my store. Thank you very much. I thank you indeed. Anything to buy? Already got the rider gloves, of course. This is current stage weaponry. But not current stage armor. Or best stage armor, which is definitely sold on top of the uh, courageous. Much better, 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 better. Books! Bookstores in the capital are voluntarily removing books published in Calvert from their displays. Even though those Calvardian books never did anything wrong, as a second-hand bookseller and as a book lover, I just can't believe it! The world of books should be free, regardless of what the international political climate is like at the time. That's crazy, though. So that's like... Weird... More censorship. Okay, no books. The chosen one is still there. The sad times are to be had. Let's continue the sweep. I guess I'll go into Hotel Augusta next. Phew, I'm real busy. My wife and I's delivery service for a luxury grocery store is back up and running, we heard. And my truck's requisition, I was sure I'd hit the end of the road on it. But Razumi knocked the sense back into me, and I borrowed a new one from Kleist & Co. I've got to hustle out there now. I don't want to put any more stress on my wife than she already has. Alright, next up is the Noble District. I have to make sure the food gets there as fresh as can be. Talk to more. There's quite a few people here. We've had a lot more guests arguing with each other. Oh, again. When the manager talks to them, they end up calming down for some reason. His nonchalant la lad back, yes, laid back attitude is actually sa saving us for once, savvy. I'm sure we'll manage to take care of that argument over there, too, so there's no need for you to worry. Still, it must be tough for the manager to mediate for everyone. I guess I can give him some sweets, something sweet, as a refreshment later. Hmm. You say General Le Guin is part of the Rebel Forces. Know your place, commoner. I haven't heard anything about General Le Guin from the newspapers or the radio. I was just saying it was suspicious. Exactly. Weren't you implying that the General is part of the Rebellion by saying that? The government announced that General Le Guin is at the front line waiting for an opportunity. This is seriously detrimental to the war morale. Manager, call the Imperial Defense Force immediately. Come now, please calm down. We both seem to have expectations of General Le Guin. We don't have much information. Why don't you discuss what you do know calmly? Oh, you have a point. Maybe it's good to hear the positive rumours. I'll bring you some tea. I hope you find common ground. I can see in the existence of the Vice and Army with that kind of excuse, sir. Huh? <laughs> we just like, nah, it's real. I'm secretly a fan of General Le Guin. If he's willing to give me information about her, I might be willing to forgive him. <laughs> they say that ignorance is a sin. I'm forgiving, so I'll impart some knowledge onto him. Yeah, okay. He's right, though. Uh, it's just like they say about being close enough to argue. Something like this will be resolved through rational conversation later on. Enjoy your constant mediation. Do you want a job in the government? That might be quite handy. Alright, 
how's your violin doing? Oh, Elliot's here. My turn. I'm going. Now. Hey, did you hear? Miss Fiona came to the concert and she taught me so much. I just need to get the beat and it'll be perfect. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, matching with the beat is tough. Hey, did... Oh, okay. No extra stuff. One, two, three, four. No Elliot stuff this time. I didn't even know I submerged a radish in water and it's begun to sprout leaves. Apparently all you need is a simple radish stem and you can cultivate leaves that are just as edible as the veggie itself. I never would have known if I hadn't looked it up. It's quite a bit of fun to learn about little life hacks like that. A sweet girl named Fiona gave Edda some advice about the violin. My daughter's improved leaps and bounds all thanks to her instructor and Fiona's guidance. Perhaps my little Etta will grow up to be a violinist someday. Maybe she will. Elliot is bringing on the next class of museum. Museums? Yes, museums. She's a museum now. Musicians. I think we're requisitioning grain for my contacts back at the food agency. They said there's nothing we can do at this point but cooperate. The way things are, it's only a matter of time before bread becomes a luxury item. More or no, if we don't put proper priority on our food supplies, the country has no future. Dear, how about we speak to Marcus Ballard? Ah uh, yes, it couldn't hurt to try at least. I'm sorry, my dear. I know I said we'd enjoy the last years of our life in peace, and now this arises. Well, I've been waiting for you to retire and come in for the last 30 years. Waiting a little longer won't make that much difference. You've always been there for me. Thank you, Fiora, for everything. Now, now, you better get going, don't you think? That's the end of their dialogue. Right, we'll be able to move on to the noble district ourselves at this rate. The Darnians I've been looking after in my master's place are blooming beautifully. If only you could have seen them. Ah, I let my mind wander onto such a depressing train of thought. I'll have to pick one of these and press it. That way he'll see how well they've turned out when he gets back. And there will be so much more. I'll make this the loveliest garden in all of Zemuria. Once I finish the shopping, I'll have to go to the cathedral to pray for my master's well-being. I believe in his abilities, I really do, but that doesn't mean I'm going to skimp out on my prayers. You're really enamoured, aren't you? I spoke with Dino and half of our harvest is going directly to a stall. Hopefully that will bring in the mirror we need to plant our next crop. First, we'll do everything we can and revitalise the stall. That's kind of cool. So you're in partnership now, essentially. Rekko and I are running this little stall together now. I reviewed how the stall was being managed to now to see if we could keep it going. There's no longer an inventory problem, but we're still only getting by on the skin of our teeth. It may be. No extra dialogue there. Cathedral. It's amazing to think how many towns there are to sweep at this point. This is the biggest sweep yet. Thank you for such a generous contribution. Please allow me to offer my gratitude. Please don't worry, the Archbishop already thanked me. I was worried that it wouldn't just be medicine you needed, but gauze and bandages. I just hope my contribution will help you restock. Thank you so much for your concern. We will use your donation wisely. Felicia has donated an incredible sum to the cathedral. We are so grateful for her desire to help us. I wanted to do my part, so I wrote a letter to my father and had some money donated to the cathedral. Normally, there's probably a need to consider profit when moving Mira, but helping those in need is the most someone as ex inexperienced as me can manage. I don't say yourself short. More and more people are being conscripted for the war effort. Fortunately, there are many brave folks here. But I'm sure they're nearing their breaking point, even if they're not showing it. I just hope that we can bring some relief to everyone's hearts, just like the performance earlier. St. Ark is called the City of Art. I think it must be home to many who are rich in spirit. Perhaps for that reason, our streets are relatively calmer than other places. I'm sure that some are going through a lot emotionally right now. Let me just do a better job of supporting them. When I ran out of herbs, a merchant called Euclides, who visits sometimes, helped me out. Thanks to him, I should be able to make the salve that the Rua Church needs. He's an interesting young person. He has as deep an understanding of medicines as I do, and knowledge of many traditions and legends. For a time, I suspected he had some relationship with the Growls Ritter. There are so many interesting young folk these days. Daisy, could that be the guy from Aaron Village? He supports St. Ark in secret as a regular person. That gives me some confidence. On top of that, Felicia, who often comes into prey, was kind enough to donate a large sum of Mira. I'm really made aware of how a great number of people are supporting us these days. I finally finished tilling the soil. I've decided to cultivate olives in this patch. Vegetables and trees require different methods, so there's a ton of studying I have to do. 
Well, I don't want to plant olives. That's the secret. Everyone's depressed before the war, but no matter what trials we face, we must keep pushing forward. Oh, I've got plenty of drive. My back really hurts. I know the medicine is in short supply, but I wonder if they've got any pain medication. Well, he's got his farm back up and running. But he's trying to constantly get the free medicine, which is cool. Healthcare for all. I'll drink to that. Alright, where are we going next? Only two people to speak out in the open? Oh, there's a green event for us. I get it. You're worried about your dad going off to the army. And you're mad because it seems like your mum doesn't care, right? Yes, that's why we're fighting. But I think that your mum is really very upset. Why would you say that? During the Civil War, both my mum and dad protected us, but they were taken to be by Aedius' side. I cried to my big sister every day. But she wouldn't cry and she tried to cheer me up instead. But one night, when I woke up in the middle of the night, I saw her crying. That's why I think your mum really does want to cry, but she's staying strong for you. Then I was being mean. I felt like I actually made things worse. Was I any help to Timothy? Mum was putting on a smile to try and make me feel better, and then I really said something horrible to her. Mum, I'm sorry. You actually helped him work for it quite well. Ever since the mask was conscripted, um, Timothy has been so worried. Both the mistress and I have tried our best to cheer him up. But it's just had the opposite effect. Richie is now our last hope. I wonder if it'll work. By the way, it seems that the mistress's health hasn't been so good because of all her emotional turmoil. My mistress is resting in her room, and I'm looking after the young master and Richie for her. I can only hope that Richie will be able to give the young master proper advice. Hit him bang on. Count out times. Now that his lordship has returned, the master has a bit more room to breathe. Such a relief, supporting art into the noble pursuit, but he was working himself to death. Even now he must be under so much pressure with the government requesting substantial funding. That's where I come in. It's my job to ease his mind by serving in the most delicious tea I can muster. Incidentally, the mistress and myself are keeping a lid on the budding romance between Miss Mary and a certain someone. The master doesn't know yet. Given how he dotes on his daughter, we're being cautious about broaching the subject. It's been a while since we got a break together. Things have been hectic indeed of late. I heard that you got a message from Mary the other day. I did. It sounds like they've implemented a full-scale military training curriculum over at Fours. She's in charge of training for the new type of Panzer Soldats. My poor girl must be stressed beyond belief. My darling daughter's instructing in the use of deadly weapons? Oh, that's exactly why I was against her becoming an instructor at a military academy. That does it. My sweet, kind-hearted girl will participate in this foolish war no longer. I'll get in touch with the principal and... Please calm down, dear. The other instructors have been helping Mary however they can. It sounds like she's in the clear now. As long as she's safe. By the by, speaking of instructors, I trust she's not being propositioned by any near do wells among the faculty. I really do dote on that girl. My husband will never stop doting on our daughter, no matter how old she gets. I wonder when I should tell him that Mary has fallen for someone. Never. Now you mention it, I wonder what Alistair is doing. This is the first time he's gone into a creative slump since the incident, isn't it? I mean, back when Alistair was in love with a young lady from a different class. When she tragically perished in an unforeseen accident, he lost a spark for a while. His talent is one for the history books. It'd be a shame if he let his artistic sensibilities languish. I've known Alistair for almost ten years. His perspective is often so left field that it defies what one would expect given his age. We simply don't meet men of his calibre every day. I'm pulling for him to find inspiration and start creating again. Good on that. Anyone up here? That's Count Altheim's check down. Another one off the list of our sweep. Almost done two thirds of Severlin or Saint Ark. Do do do. I took him for a nag, but he turned out to be a sensible man. Hey, well, I accept your offer. Charles signed the agreement. Charles, <laughs> you gullible idiot! Didn't notice the carbon paper underneath, did ya? You signed two deals at once, you fool. I guess what the one you haven't seen entails. What are you talking about? You just donate all your land to me. I'm gonna put your tenants to work, have a summer cottage built here and whatnot. War's not my game. I plan to live comfortably right here, and that's exactly what I'll do thanks to you. 
I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but the contract you speak of is all soggy and illegible. What? But you didn't spill anything on the table. How did this happen? I suppose the tablecloth was still wet from when I washed it yesterday. The paper on the bottom got damp and the ink blotted all over. I... I... Charles got lucky this time. I don't think a signature on carbon paper is legally sound, but still, that was a really nasty scam. When Lord Dendary revealed the carbon paper trick, I could feel all the blood drain from my face at once. Unfortunately, we were saved by Izzy's clumsiness. All's well that ends well, but if it's all the same, I prefer not to have the conversation with my doctor about my blood pressure in the near future. Yes, when Lord and Ari revealed the carbon paper trick, I could feel the blood drain from my face at once. Unfortunately, we have... We say it. It's double, 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 double. I didn't have time to dry that tablecloth properly, but it was only damp in a few places, so I thought they wouldn't notice. It's kind of embarrassing that they found out. Yeah, but... But you... You did... You, you won. Good job. I'm going to keep these documents. We can continue this conversation in court, Lord and Dare. No, hold on. That first offer I made. You can at least accept that one, though. It's not a bad deal for you. Can we sell this outside of court? I beg you. Ooh. Ooh, you screwed. Oh. Give it to him. I mean, you could make a better deal for yourself as well and swindle him back, but maybe it might just be good to show him up to the full extent of the law at this juncture. Alright, so can I go inside? Marcus Hyams is here today. Oh, Willie? There are some other visitors today, too. If you have business with Marcus Ballard or Marcus Hyams, then you may proceed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was just like, I don't have Patrick. I can't do that. I was thinking maybe I could take Eustace. Marcus High Arms! I was under the impression that you were in hiding. Apologies for the intrusion. I wanted to have a meeting in secret. Do you mind if I use this space? A secret meeting? Make yourself comfortable. This is your mansion, after all. This golden haired young lady. I don't think I've had the pleasure. It's nice to meet you. I'm Lucy Sayland, secretary to the Grand Prince of the Principality of Remetheria. Today I'm speaking on behalf of the Grand Prince. Remetheria? I do have some information on the movements of the country. I thought they joined an alliance with Mildin to take part in the war. I wonder why they're negotiating with high arms. That means Remetheria is still keeping themselves open to other options. Marcus Ballard, would it be possible to speak with you? I know that his lordship is well informed of the situation in all aspects. I hope you'll use your great wisdom to help advise us on our best way forward. Alright, Wilhelm. You have abundant experience when it comes to political maneuvering. This is easy. Well, of course. I will definitely offer you the best advice I possibly can. Do you mean it? Thank you so much. <sighs> ah. Come now. Time is of the essence. Let's make our way. Sure. Let's use the office. I'm impressed how easily you persuaded him. He's doing no small part to the efforts of your lordship. I wonder what else he could do for us. Uh, should we get going? The con is on. Our timing is near perfect. Secretary Lucy is holding a meeting with the two Marquises. It doesn't look like it's about Operation Mill Mirage. Hmm, how very interesting. Uh, she's in the office. This might be a good time to visit her. Ooh, interesting. I'm just so glad that Master's back. According to what I heard, the airship his lordship was in got hijacked. I'm ashamed that I was enjoying my life quietly passing by while the Master was in such a predicament. I'm going to make sure that all the servants are better trained to serve the Master. It's unusual that Mr. Celestine would do something apart from the Master and the Lord. They must be preparing for a really big plan. I want Mr. Celestine to get some rest too sometimes. I'm so happy Master just returned! I knew I didn't have to worry about Master because Ma Mr. Celestine was with him, but seeing him happy and well, I can't help but feel giddy. Master Patrick has gone to the eastern part of the Empire. I know that he's busy, but I hope he's not pushing himself too hard. The Patrick forces. Let's go to the Marquis's office. I wish we had more about Patrick during this whole time, to be perfectly honest with you. 
event. Why, hello everyone. Who would have managed or imagined we'd run into each other again so soon? Good to see you again, Lucy. Sorry if I interrupted your talk. I didn't mean to be a bother. Oh, don't be silly. You're not a bother at all. Besides, the things we're discussing here today affect you just as much as they do us. It's hard to argue with that. Putting that aside for now, I've been traveling a lot lately, so I picked up a very interesting novel to read in transit. It's said in Remifarious, that immediately caught my attention. That being said, would you mind taking it off my hands? My bags are heavy enough as it is, and it would be nice to know if it was good going to a good home. It would be nice to know it was going to a good home. Alright, sure. I can't wait to give it a read. Thank you so much. Here you are. The bingo. <laughs> That's right on time as well. Now, if I were Kayla, you would have to check to make sure the book wasn't bugged. But rest assured, no gift I ever offer you will ever contain any sort of listening device. Uh, good to know, I guess. Thanks. How many pages is this? Well, we're about to read it, pretty much. 22. Huh. But is it even possible to stop the government's plans from going forward? To be blunt, preventing the war is no longer an option at this point. However, we can mitigate the damage now by preparing support structures for refugees and making plans for post-war restoration. Which leaves us with much more to think about than if we only had to worry about stopping it. She's right. The war will bring with it a great deal of disorder. But given how many people in power are politically gagged at the moment, incautious behaviours may well put a target on our backs. I suppose you have a point. The of the world is still up in the air. What kind of prospects will we have when the dust finally clears? As a close neighbour to Erebonia, this is as much Remifaria's problem as it is yours. Though together, I'm sure we can accomplish great things, your lordship. A daughter of an honourable Remifarian family in Lord Hyams. An interesting pair, to be sure. The timing is perfect. I've grown weary of hearing about the government of Iceland. Well, let's see what kind of juicy tidbits I can extract from this lot. So they don't have more double speech. They're basically at their double speech limit. I'm pleased to hear you safely reunite with Prince Oliver. Get a hand in making the creatures too happen, right? Hm. My involvement's only recent. Marcus Rogan had reached out to me in secret and enlisted my help. I see. Is the reason Lucy's here related to that? She's here for a different reason, but we're also working to find a solution to things. I've heard about your latest undertakings. The current state of affairs doesn't leave much room for optimism, does it? Still, I ask that you allow us to place our hopes on you as well. Of course. Please, please feel free to do so. By the way, I've sent Celestine to Fours as a point of contact. I imagine he's on the Durfling right about now. The current state of affairs doesn't leave much room for optimism, but if anything offers a glimmer of hope, it's you. We checked him out. Right, so... That seems to be here done. Can we finish off... The entirety of St. Ark? Well, let's just warp to the residential district and start checking out. And that will bookend us with a book. Isn't the Empress surgery happening soon? Empress Priscilla and Princess Alpha must be beside themselves with worry. There may still be Carbonian spies around, so it may be difficult for them to go outside. I really hope the two of them are able to pay the Emperor a visit soon. Oh, yeah, I remember seeing the news in the Imperial Chronicle. It'd be great if we could visit the Emperor too. I do hope Empress Priscilla and Princess Alpha haven't collapsed from worry. Meanwhile, Prince Cedric is kept busy with the preparations for war. It'd be good if there was someone around there who's there to support them, but... Hey, we're there. And of course they're not in the collapse, they're stronger than that. I swallow my pride and ask Dad for a story again. He was weirdly happy. I don't actually have any interest in his old tales, I just wanted to get my mind off things. There are lots of people coming to make orbit adjustments because of all the wild monsters, but rationing makes getting new stock difficult. Not a rebellious phase or anything, okay? My mom just wants to blame everything I do on a rebellious phase. Just wish he'd stop treating me like a child. I was surprised when Cole wanted to hear some stories. Said he couldn't get into the swing of things if I didn't, so it seems his rebellious phase ended pretty quickly. Oh, and lately, all of the plants in my store have begun withering. It's said that things like this are harbingers of ill tidings, but... In reality, war's almost upon us. I can't help but feel it was really an omen. And even so, Coyle really wanted to hear the stories. I can't believe it. If you can't push them to change their minds, they try backing off. They might come around on their own. Yes. That's, that's true. That is very true. We don't have to push everything so hard all the time, after all. So that means there's... That means we can obviously go up in... Because we saw a green mark at the mansion in Ordis. That means we can obviously just walk right up there. 
and talk to Mummy. So I can't bring Alvin with me. No, oh, that's a bit of a shame. I've got a lot of people who'll be leaving for the army stopping by these days. They come in and sell their precious heirlooms and artworks so they can use the mirror bind for their families while they're away. Just the other day, a man came in with a watch his grandfather had given him. It's painful to imagine the amount of hardship my customers must be going through to part with such treasured valuables. Like after all the items my customers entrusted me as if they were my very own. In the end, that's the utmost I can do to respect their wishes. Do you let them buy them back though? For like, not a massively a markup? That's what I'm wondering. Do they get the chance of buying back what they've lost? Well, there's no one outside at all. Mum and Dad wrote a letter saying that we should devote ourselves to the Empire. And that soldiers should die for the Great Erebonia if that's what it takes. That's just so wrong. Mum and Dad are so wrong about all of this. I agree, Ran. We can't treat human life as dispensable. From what I could tell in their letter, they're planning to come pick you up in a few days. So please remember this. Don't lose sight of what you know is right and be sure to follow your heart. Mum and Dad can't be right. No way! It's like they don't even care that Trap being drafted means he might never come back. I don't want him to die. I don't know why they've changed so, so much, but I can't go along with them. I'm so proud of Rand for not letting what her parents said get to her. They should learn a lesson or two from her and change this way of thinking they're so absorbed in. Yes, well, curse. I guess it's hard to just straight up explain to people. Yeah, but curse. And the last building to check out in the entirety of St. Ark. Sweep complete. Well, for this bit. With less NPCs though, of course, because war. I got a response from Nash. Corolla, I had no idea you were so madly in love with me. I can't promise that I'll marry you, but if I come back from the war in one piece, I wouldn't mind going out with you. What the kind of fancy what is that dummy living in? What does he mean, if he comes back in one piece? Enough of the hero act, Ash. Nash. Ash. Not Ash. Nash. Cut the crap and just come home already. This is Nash we're talking about, so I don't think he'll do anything that'll get him killed. Even so, he was dumb enough to completely misconstrue how I feel about him, so I can't help but worry. Yeah, I get you. I get you on that one. Wonder, Albert, and Kaiser Dice. I hope their training in Nord is going alright. My contact managed to persuade the supervisor at Zender Gate. I managed to get them to Nord safely. Many have left nines because of their public image, while others have been conscripted. They're the only hope left for the club. If we all hope to have a future after the war, it's in my best interest to make sure they're thriving out there. I wonder when the others are doing special training in Nord. With more imminent, some people think it's ridiculous that we're worried about horse riding. I don't care what the world says. I'm ready to lay down my life for nines. He wants to keep his passion going. And that is St. Ark. So, a quest to bonding event. A couple of places sweeped. A book has been found. So we're left with three entries here. One of which is a highway. One of which is tight escape, which is quite small. Palm's not massive either. The big sweep comes to the West Lamar side of things. Or this is going to be massive. Raquel is quite large as well. Alster's tiny. So we're getting there. We're ticking it off the list. And we have two quests left at this point in time. We're not exactly in a bad shape to do it. In nice time. But right now, I'm going to warp myself into... Wait, you can't warp yourself right there? There you go. Because we're going to set some music up. Pay another 10 mirror. I'm going to farm some... Many, 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 many U materials. I'm thinking at least 500 at this point. Maybe another 500 later. We'll see how U materials go, right? But we have just managed to obtain a little bedtime story. So I'm going to read it to this brilliant music in Randy's messy room with his sexy girl meow. <laughs> sure. Maybe not the best music to read this to in terms of tone, but we'll see. So, let's lead out on another session with Chapter 8 of 3 and 9. Gravity and Artifacts. 3 and 9 return to the hill, or more accurately where the hill used to be. It was now completely unrecognisable. A sizable chunk of it was gone, having been strewn about the area in a form of countless bits of rubble. The Emperor stood right where they had left him, seemingly unfazed. 
As for your nine of surmise, he has sustained at least some manner of injury. Nothing major, but his ever-present robe under which he had hidden his face had been reduced to little more than a shredded cape. Underneath, he wore a gold helmet bearing a crown design. In his hand, he carried a golden scepter with a spherical tip, and his body was covered in golden armour. The word ostentatious was insufficient to describe his heavily gilded countenance. Everything about him suggested both needless grandeur and wicked condescension. I knew you'd be back. You two aren't complete fools after all, the Emperor called out to them. Three and nine remained silent as they slowly approached. So have you decided? Which of you two will gain the organization's forgiveness? Three and nine turned to each other and nodded. Free removed his hand from his sword, leaving it sheathed. Free knelt down and closed his eyes, showing acceptance of what was to come. In response, Nine pulled out some of her poison needles and silently launched them at Free's neck, or at least that's how she made it appear. At the last second before the needles parted from her fingers, she deftly altered their trajectory, sending them speeding towards the Emperor instead. The envenomed projectiles whizzed perfectly through the air as ever. However, as they neared their intending target, they suddenly curved downward sharply, plummeting harmlessly to the ground. Very well. I hear your answer loud and clear, the Emperor proclaimed, looking up at the pair. You both wish to die today. Not a chance, Nine called out, throwing another volley of needles directly at the Emperor. The trajectory suddenly shifted again, this time upward. From his kneeling position, Free quickly shifted his stance and pushed forward off the ground with all the power he could muster in his legs. He launched himself at the Emperor, breaking into a full-on charge. We've had enough. You're the one meeting their death today. Free began slashing away at his target with incredible speed. His lightning quick strikes grew slow and sluggish as soon as they neared the Emperor. However, with his assailant's speed so drastically curbed, the man was able to use his golden scepter to effortlessly bat aside the boy's assault. In the same instant, Nine's second set of needles changed direction mid-air and began falling straight toward the Emperor. She managed to calculate the range of his gravitational field with just a single throw. Once she understood its effects on projectiles, she was able to revise her trajectory. Moreover, she had factored in the increased acceleration from the higher gravity, meaning her needles would hit harder than normal. Despite all that, however, her attack was neutralized by a flick of the Emperor's gilded arm. It was still not enough to penetrate his armor. It was, however, more than sufficient to around his ire. Sure. You dare defy me? Me? Livid, he swung his scepter downward. Free immediately reacted, just barely managing to block the attack with his sword. Even so, the impact alone threw him back several large. Free could feel his brain rattle in his skull from the force of the blow. There was no way the Emperor's physical strength and the weight of the scepter alone could do that. It occurred to Free that there must have been another way he was able to manipulate gravity. You will be purged, the Emperor said in a low growl. The same words Free had heard him say a few hours ago and three years ago. When the Emperor spoke like this, it was nothing less than the arbitration of a death sentence. At the sound of those words, past memories bubbled up in Free's mind and an old terror began to grip him. His legs grew wobbly and he started to stagger. One glance back at Nine was all it took for him to re restore his resolve, however. He forced himself back on his feet, reflexively snapping into a fighting stance. Nine continued to provide covering fire of her needles as Free renewed his assault. Their approach proved no more fruitful than before. Even so, as Free continued to fight under such grueling conditions, he slowly became more capable. His understanding of his foe's gravitational trickery improved, and his strikes grew more swift and precise as a result. The way his muscles intuitively reacted, the angle of speed at which he swung his swords, he was slowly chipping away at the Emperor's overwhelming advantage. Though Free may not have enjoyed the same powers of insight his partner possessed, his skills in close quarter combats were elite by even the most exacting of standards. For her part, Nine's cover was solid and unwavering. Realizing her needles had no hope of piercing the Emperor's gold plating, she had instead began aiming for gaps between its pieces. It was an incredibly difficult task, but as she grew more accustomed to the disrupting effects of the gravitational field, she was gradually getting closer. She began weaving in offensive arts along with her volleys of needles in order to keep the Emperor on his toes. Her attacks appeared simple enough for her foe to deal with, but they still managed to pull his attention away from free, even if only for a moment. The fight raged on, and after a bit of time, Free and Nine appeared to have finally began gaining the upper hand. The Emperor did not seem phased in the slightest. His expression was unreadable beneath the shadows of his helmet, but it was clear from his body language he still believed himself fully in control of the situation. Free managed to land the occasional strike, but even his sword seemed to do little against the Emperor's impossibly resilient armor. In an attempt to land a heavier blow, Free launched himself into the air, intending to let the gravity carry his swords downwards, just as Nine's needle had. However, he found himself soaring up far higher than he intended. 
impossibly so, as though he had suddenly sprouted wings. His mark completely missed, he lost his sense of balance and began tumbling through the air. He quickly realized it could only have been due to more of his foe's trickery. Reduced gravity. Expertly seizing the opening, the Emperor raised his scepter overhead, then swiftly swung it downward. As if mimicking his motion, Free suddenly dropped out of the air, thrown to the ground hard like a ragdoll. <laughs> the air knocked out of his lungs. Free struggled to catch his breath, spitting up mouthfuls of blood in between gasps. Get out of the way, he's not done! Saved by Nine's frantic warning, Free just barely managed to roll out of the way. A split second later, the scepter slammed down into the ground where he had just been. As the gravity enhanced scepter connected with the rocky ground below, it let out a powerful blast, leaving a crater in its wake. S! Oh, S, even! The resulting shockwave launched Free to the side, knocking him to relative safety. Had he taken a direct hit, he would have been completely pulverized. Though dazed, he was still aware enough to signal to Nine that he was okay. He forced himself to his feet. The battle had completely changed. The Emperor had begun manipulating gravity levels on a constant cycle and Free was forced into a defensive position. Whenever he managed to get a handle on his foe's barrage of attacks, he found the gravity level altered yet again, forcing him to start back at zero. It was impossible for him to fight in such ever-changing conditions. The situation was taxing for Nine as well. She found herself forced to constantly recalculate the field's range and gravity value, severely reducing the number of effective attacks she was able to launch. Despite their bleak outlook, the two of them continued to hold out. Even when pressured, Free served as an excellent vanguard, consistently denying the Emperor any opportunities for his decisive strike. Nai, meanwhile, continued to back him up flawlessly, acting with a surgical precision that ensured no opening went to waste. Yes, she called out to him as he leapt back, putting some distance between himself and the Emperor. I think I figured something out. Let's hear it. Free waited for her to continue, keeping his guard up and watching closely for any sign of attack from the Emperor. Have you noticed anything different from when you and Ace fought him before? Was he carrying anything in his left hand back then? Freak glanced at his foe's left hand, seeing it empty. He fought back to three years ago. Now that you mention it, I'm pretty sure he had an orb with him, purple with a golden sculpture of a crow on it. The battle back then was completely one-sided. Just as I suspected, Nine nodded. Free had also sensed something was different, but had simply chalked it up to the Emperor toying with them as he didn't consider them to be a true threat to him. Factoring in what Nine had just pointed out, however, cast things in a much different light. Oh, so you've realised? The Emperor paused his onslaught as though in recognition of Nine's keen observation. You see the implements he has on him now? I suspect at one point he had four different artifacts to let him control gravity. Four, huh? Free said, taking note of the Emperor's equipment. Right, helmet with a crown motif that can increase or reduce the overall level of gravity, armor that absorbs the force imparted by attacks the moment they are received, a scepter that sends out a devastating gravitational wave when it makes contact with its target, and an orb with a crow perched on it that allows its wielder to alter gravity on a target by target basis. Nine paused her explanation for a moment as she looked defiantly at the Emperor. The reason he had worn that tattered cloak was now clear. If someone were to wield so many artifacts at once as he did, it would be necessary to conceal them. Failure to do so would surely attract unwanted attention from the church. Now you mention it, this time around he hasn't been moving faster while slowing us down at the same time, Free said. When we fought him before, we, we couldn't even touch him. It was true that in their fight against him, Free and Ace had been struggling under different levels of gravity than the Emperor. There was no doubt he was toying with them in the present, but at the very least, both sides were battling under the same levels of gravity, constantly shifting though they were. As such, the pair's odds of winning were much better this time around. I think he either lost the orb at some point, or was destroyed, or at least damaged in the rock slide, Nine explained. The pair realised that if this were true, now was their best chance to take down the Emperor once and for all. A talented tool indeed. The Emperor's voice was low, tinged with a hint of perverse delight. The artifacts I wear are collectively known as the Monarch's Regalia. I'm impressed you were able to analyse their capabilities in such a limited amount of time. You, Nine of Swords, are truly outstanding. I don't want your praise, you bastard. Ignoring Nine's retort, the Emperor continued on, his exhilaration giving way to a violent savagery. But even the greatest tool is worthless if it will not submit to its rightful place in my hands. His body began levitating, broken chunks of earth underfoot rising up with him. With all the force he could muster, he swung his scepter into a nearby boulder. And worthless tools must be disposed of. In that instant, the boulder shattered into shards of all shapes and sizes that were sent rocketing toward Nine. Watch out! Free cried out. The shards flew like a salvo of bullets from a thousand different guns, all of them pointed directly at one target. 
It was a grim sight, not unlike a sol single soldier standing before the assault of an entire army. Panicked, Free rushed into the line of fire. He brandished his swords and did everything he could to prevent the shards from reaching Nine. He deflected and broke what he could, using his body as a shield for the rest, but there was a considerable distance between him and Nine, one he could not cover easily. By the time he had leapt in the way, a great many shards were already too far ahead. Free was too late. Nine had no realistic chance of avoiding the entirety of the attack and instead devoted her efforts to simply avoiding the worst of the pieces of stone flying at her. There were far too many, however, and one managed to slip through her defences. She suffered a direct hit to the abdomen and a red mist sprayed from her mouth as she crumpled to the earth. To be continued. Probably when you think about in two weeks time. The battle continues then. So, we're so much swept already on this go round, and probably less than whatever other further sweep we have. We still have two bonding points to spend. So we will of course <laughs> see Laura's event. Why did you sound like the guy from Hyrule Warriors then? <laughs> if you know what I mean. With that done, we continue on next time with Ordis and more. Two more quests to undertake. They're actual quests, not that fight like we did with versus Gali. We will continue on with more then. Trails of Cold Steel 4 continues. And look at that free figure playtime. That's just elevating. That will elevate much more once I fish a lot of those fish for all those glorious new materials. I'll see you guys then. Bye bye.